trying to figure out if tipping has gotten out of control. <laughs> no comment, but no. yes. <laughs> It's like, it's like kind of like taxes, because you pay for your food, you get taxed on your food, and then you expect a tip. I, I think overall tipping should be abolished. It's starting to feel more like a, a, an obligation, something that you just have to do. And I know it has gotten a little bit higher, but so is the cost of living. Even if I get bad service, I still tip well. Discomfort at the till? Maybe you're guilt tipping because the debit machine suggested it. Are you over tipping? What kind of a tipper are you when you're out? 25%? 25%. We're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For you. Uh, I learned from her. <laughs> Canadians, we're polite, or maybe we're just afraid of things getting a little bit awkward. But in the last few years, our average tipping behavior has gone way up, and so have the places where you're expected to tip. Like, do I tip my oil change guy? or Because there is an option. And those... Tip the oil guy? I tip the oil guy. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Canadians are now among the most generous tippers in the world. By some, admittedly, rough estimates, we're tipping $9 billion a year. And when 18, 20, 25% extra has become the norm, where do you draw the line? What's tip culture in Brazil? Uh, it's only 10% usually, like, um, and it's only in restaurants, so I think it's very different from here. What was your reaction to seeing our tip? Uh, I was a little bit shocked. It's very expensive to go out here. I found it, yeah. I feel guilty if I don't give, like, I feel like 15% is cheap, so, you know, 20% is generous, but that's a substantial amount. But, yeah, it does put you on the spot a little bit. It does, it does sort of make you, like, oh, I better, again, you know, you want to appear, you, you, you want to be generous, but, yeah, it does, it does definitely add to the bill. Um, I love to tip. I just, it does, you know, you feel the financial pressure at points. You're like, that's getting high. So if it's saying 20%, I should be given 20%. Or if it's saying 60%, that's what I should be giving. And if you go under that, then it kind of feels not great. What she's talking about is tipping fatigue. Pollsters were looking into that earlier this year. They found two in five Canadians saying that extra cost of tipping was what was sending them over their spending threshold and they just stopped going out. People are starting to feel that, that it's no longer that kind of act of giving thanks to that individual that's serving them. So it kind of uh, ends up not being a process of, I am being good because you were good to me and that reciprocal act. You just tip five bucks on what? Yeah. Um, I think my total was 18. When you have the cash, it's yeah. almost like you have a control over, like you just do what you, exactly want. you do what you want. No one's asking you for it, right? No you don't Exactly. I think when people see it on, on the tip machine, on the machine, the debit machine, I think when they see it, they feel obligated sometimes to tip. But my tipping is coming from me. I'm not tipping for the sake of tipping. I'm coming because I want to tip and it's coming from me. Now, if you look at data from some point of sale terminals, before the pandemic, the average tip in Canada was about 16%. These days, though, it's roughly 20. So the expectation is more money at more places tip creep. So that's where tipping is not only in restaurants to your person at the hair salon and the pizza delivery person, it's also, um, you know, your dry cleaner, your oil loop person. I was at a gift shop the other day and, and they asked for a tip um, when I was just paying for some candles. Consumers are also not only feeling fatigued, they're also questioning what tipping, you know, is it what it used to be about originally and no it isn't yeah i think that the cost is put on the consumer which seems a bit unfair it seems like it should be the employer that would pay their employees that seems a bit more logical doesn't it i think most consumers find it to be really annoying i think we have all had the experience of being handed the chip card reader and we look at the choices and go huh do they really expect something that that high? Not just annoying, but researchers say tipping is where our biases come in. They find many people are tipping based on their server's age, race, gender, or looks, especially when you're asked to tip at the till before you even receive your product at the counter. It's been shown to be discriminatory. It cre creates inequity, which my research shows. Um, it can create divisions in restaurants between front of house, back of house. It all makes for a really uncomfortable social interaction for a lot of people, and it can make things awkward behind the counter, too. Hey, Emilio, how's it going? I'm, I wonder, like, from a business perspective, is there a point at which you think, if I put the, the, the tip percentage too high, 
I might start driving people away. Okay. Yeah. Is that a, is that a consideration? Yeah, it was definitely something that like we've considered and even just having the tip option on the machine, like we have gotten some complaints and obviously it's, it's important to, to be understanding of everybody and, and, you know, make sure that, you know, customers feel understood. It was mostly just, you know, feeling pressured to tip and not understanding how to even skip the option and and you know so people kind of felt like i said they just kind of felt pressured into tipping so some people didn't like that but like i said it was very very few get real with me here though yeah. because like as a customer you come here if you don't if you skip that tip option you know you feel guilty as a yeah. customer yeah. So what are you thinking at the other side so me personally i i like to back up a little bit and just sort of like you know like my, act, my my own business, you know what I mean. Just act like you know I don't know I don't know what they're doing, and, and that's it, you know. And and uh, I, I feel like it kind of works. Like people feel because if you just kind of stand here and you just kind of like watch them put in their tip, then they're really gonna feel kind of awkward. So I just kind of back up and let them do their thing. And if they want to tip, then that's cool. And if not, obviously that's cool too. So what's happening in other countries? Well, places like France, Japan, they don't typically tip. And if you look at European countries, most of them tip very moderate amounts. What that ends up meaning is more stable pay and benefits. It means cooking, serving, bartending jobs, they all tend to become more stable careers. Before where it used to be, the restaurants were battling with tipping. They would always say, okay, but you know what? Consumers aren't ready to get rid of it, so we have to keep it now. Most consumers just want rid of it. The data he's talking about shows a huge shift in public opinion on tipping after the pandemic. Before the pandemic, 40% of Canadians said that they would prefer a service included model. By this year though, nearly 60% said it was time to go tip free. That kind of habit though, it takes a huge systemic shift in thinking to break. So I think if we start with maybe going a little bit back to that whole, it's actually a process of thanking that individual that might be a good first step. I think everybody deserves a, a good income, so I think employers should be paying their teams enough, their staff, yeah. I imagine your server will get a nice tip. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> already done. And I like to leave little notes when I, oh, and so that. we do, thank you, a little drawing, because why not, okay? We're in a world where everything's really hard right now. If you can do a little something small, a compliment, something kind that's genuine, hey, that'll be a go a lot further, I think, anyways. We spoke to a lot of people for this story, a lot of them obviously for tipping, but a lot of other people were against it. The thing is, they said they didn't want to admit that on camera because they didn't want to sound cheap and they didn't want to be judged by their friends and colleagues, which is maybe part of the reason that even though a majority of Canadians seem to be against tipping altogether, it's probably here to stay.